Well, 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 it has been a hot minute since we've talked like this, you and I, just here, by ourselves, all alone. See? And now I made it creepy. Every time! Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jason, or as much as the internet knows me as Easy Cat. And it's been a couple months since I did a reading update. Um, some of you noticed, some of you even, like, reached out to me via personal email, which... A little weird, if I'm being honest, uh, for the fact that I didn't do an August reading wrap-up. Um, the, the simple fact of the matter is that in August, I barely read anything. I was traveling, and I was busy, and I was exhausted. And so I just didn't read that much. And so when it got to the end of the month, I was like, well, I'm probably not going to do one. It was because there was just, I hadn't really read anything. And it was not doing one meant taking one small thing off my plate, which at the time, like when August 31st rolled around and September 1st rolled around, one less thing on my plate was like the difference between me losing my mind and not. So... I took the thing off my plate, and sometimes that's gonna happen, right? Um, so, but here we are. I, I read actually quite a bit in, in September. Um, I got, I feel like two days ago, I was like, well, I really didn't read that much in September either. And then I sat down and looked at what I'd read in September, and I was like, well, actually, that's a sizable little chonky chonk. So I figured we'd talk about it. And I would walk you through everything that I read in September. So that's what we're going to do today. And I'm excited to talk about all of these books. Now, before we get started, uh, I normally, I always mention this in my videos, but today I really, I'm, I'm going to super mention it. So sit back for a second because I am going to uh, put a personal plea into the universe uh, and, and we'll just see what happens. So Many of you know, because many of you are subscribed to my bindery uh, or Easy Cat Press, or you are familiar with uh, Easy Cat Press because you've seen me talk about it on my channels, uh, but Easy Cat Press is my personal um, publishing imprint that I launched with Bindery about a year ago. And in just two short weeks, on October 15th, uh, our first book that we are publishing will be launching, and that book is... House of Frank by Kay Sinclair. This is a cozy adjacent witchy fantasy book about grief and recovery and healing and found family and you know just finding ourselves after we lose someone and the different forms of recovery that our paths might take us on. Uh, it is a book that I is just so near and dear to my heart. I absolutely adore it. I've adored it since the first day I read it. I've adored it since I chose it as my first book to publish with Bindery, and I still adore it to this day. So this is coming out on October 15th. This is a finished copy. It is no longer an arc. This is what it's going to look like. And it is available for pre-order everywhere. Uh, not just in print, but in ebook as well as audiobook. It is available everywhere. And I just would absolutely love if you read it. And if you are interested in reading it in any way, shape, and form, I would love if you pre-ordered it. Now, I know, I know, I'm particularly terrible at pre-ordering books, so I get that you just might not pre-order books, and that's okay too. But if you are somebody who happens to pre-order things, we are getting really, really close to having a thousand pre-orders. And for a debut author, for a debut publisher, to have a thousand pre-orders before launch is is pretty like I mean it's it's big it's a big it's a big milestone and I just I selfishly want to get there and I feel like I don't really typically ask for things when I want them I I'm just not that person I don't I don't like to ask for things I and to my <laughs> much to my detriment oftentimes but my my small ask is if you plan to read House of Frank uh why not give us a pre-order? Because it does really help us out a lot, and uh, it just builds more excitement for the book. And we're so close. We're so close. And I would love to be able to say, like, our Kay's first published book with us, uh, my first published book uh, from my imprint, that we hit a thousand pre-orders. It just would be so phenomenal. I will let you know, this is the first time I'm announcing this, so you guys are, are in the know. This is going to be the Easy Cats Book Club book pick for November. So if you're on Fable with us and you read uh, every month with the Easy Cats Book Club book club, <laughs> what just happened? I think my brain just skipped a beat and that's okay. We're going to be reading this in November. So you might as well pre-order it now and then you'll have it when we read it together in November. And by the way, if you're not already a member, Easy Cats Book Club is free to join. You just, there. I'll put a link down below. It's on Fable and we'd love to have you. We read a book every month and it's super fun. So that's 
And that's my plea to you, House of Frank. Now, if you're interested in more behind the scenes stuff and exclusive footage and all of that, I will put a link down to Easy Cat Press as well. It is a subscription community. So uh, there is a free tier and I do post stuff for the free tier fairly often as well. But there also are tiers, uh, like different subscription tiers as well, if you want extra goodies along the way. So I'll put that down below as well. But most importantly, if you get a chance to pre-order House of Frank, please do so. That would just be... That would just be the best. Okay, so I think that's enough preamble. I've already I've already talked too much <laughs> for one day, but we still have a bunch of books to talk about. So how about we jump in to all of that? Let's go. Now, I do want to start with the one book that I did read in August, because uh, I really liked it a lot. This was The Spell Shop. So this actually was the Easy Cats Book Club pick for August, and I did read it. <laughs> Who, who even am I reading books that I picked to read in that month? I have this really pretty edition. I think it's from Barnes & Noble. It has like pretty purple things. I don't know. And I really like this a lot. It is cozy fantasy. The stakes are a little bit higher than I think you find in some cozy fantasy. And I also found it had a little bit more like romance. It had a, it was like what I love about cozy fantasy, but it kind of had a little like sprinkling of something more. Like there was just a little something more to it. It almost had this like Disney movie quality to it. And I enjoyed it a lot. Our main character is basically on the run and she is very much an introvert. She doesn't like people. And she's like basically taken a bunch of books with her. And so she's like worried about being found out because she basically stole a bunch of books and she has like a talking plant friend uh and you know she goes to this town where if i remember right her parents are from the town so uh the town is like going through a lot so she's just like well, i'm gonna help them out and she has magic but she's trying not to show that she has magic because that will alert the authorities that she's there and so she's like casually trying to like help sprinkle a little magic on the problems and then when people are like wow that you fixed that real right quick she's like oh old family remedy i don't know what to say <laughs> <laughs> try to pretend it's not magic. It's very cute. If you are someone who is an introvert who like prefers to read rather than talk to people, which let's be honest, it's it's all of us. It's you. It's me. Why did I point at me when I said you? It's you. It's me. It's all of us in the room right now. There's no, I'm the only one here, but you get it. We're all in the room together. We're all this person. So I, it's, it's a, she's a main character that's very easy to like fall in love with because you just instantly feel like get her, right? When she's like, oh my God, I don't want to do a peel. I just want to, just want to read all day. You're like, yes. <laughs> that is correct. Yes, that's the right feeling. It's very cute. If I have any criticism, I think the, the ending of the book, the third act, is a little bit rushed. I feel like we were, you, we are building to it, but when the actual, like, problem of the book kind of comes into play, like, the actual issue that is being brought up, uh, I, 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 like, I cared a lot less about the actual plot. <laughs> Then I did just, like, getting to know the people of this town, watching her, like, start to, like, build the spell shop, watching her interact with these different characters, the little bit of, the little romance story. And I, I also, to that end, I also feel like the, the romantic aspect of the book could have had a little bit more tension, because there's, like, no point where I'm like, they're not gonna get together. <laughs> like, as soon as we meet the, the love interest, I'm like, oh, yeah they're gonna get together. Like, there's no point, and there's no point where I'm, like, worried for that. And I guess maybe that's okay. I think sometimes people, uh, myself included, want to read a book where I don't have to worry about whether they're gonna get together. Like, I just want that guarantee, like, these two are eventually gonna, you know, they're eventually gonna fall in love. But this was, like, particularly, it's almost like it took too long for them to get together because there just was nothing standing in the way, other than her, like, being an introvert and not trusting anyone, which, I fine, okay, trust issues, I guess, are a thing that stop people from, like, getting together. But to me, I was just like, what are we waiting for? What are we doing here? She's hot. He's hot. Let's go. I don't know. I, <laughs> I, I, you know, in some books, there's like very like big things standing in the way of two characters eventually like getting together. So when they get together, it feels like a big payoff. But in this, when they got together, I was like, finally, <laughs> about time. Tick tock. We're wasting. We're wasting away as you deal with all your why, why we're not together things. There just was never like a big reason for them to not be together other than they weren't until the plot decided they should be. So that would maybe be my little complaint, but it's not a big complaint because it is a cozy fantasy. So at the end of the day, you don't want too much tension. You don't want too much stress. It's it's meant to be like light and, and a little fluffy and a little bit comforting. And that is what this was. And so I, I really did like this a lot. Definitely one of my favorite cozy fantasies I've read in recent memory. So that was The Spell Shop. All right, next up, I want to talk about uh, What Is This Feeling by Robbie Weber. This is a very adorable little gay rom-com um, set in New York City. And I just thought this was as cute as can be. And I mentioned this in my review I did of it on TikTok and Instagram. But uh, I've read all three of Robbie Weber's books now. I've been following Robbie Weber since, I mean... <sighs> 
he is, I've, I've said this before, but he is a big reason why I started making content because he was making bookish content and I just loved the aesthetic of what he was doing. And I was like, I really want to do that. Like I want to do that. And so he was someone I really looked up to very strongly when I started making book content. He did more like photo type stuff. He wasn't doing a lot of video stuff at the time. Um, and, but I, you know, wanted to do video type stuff, but I just loved that he was unapologetically, like he was an adult showing like young adult stories, a lot of queer stories and just, you know, really focusing on that. And I, I just was like, wow, I, I like at the time when I first was getting into book talk, I felt a little bit alone. Like I, uh, I didn't know that there were so many adults who enjoyed reading middle grade and YA and adult and like reading across the age spectrum. I thought I was kind of weird. And then of course, when I got into the bookish spaces online, I realized, oh, I'm, I'm not that weird. And that's really cool. And that's one of the things I love about the book community is you realize that there are lots of people like you. And I think that's amazing. I um, really looked up to him. And at the time, he was a big inspiration for me starting to make content. So when he became an author a couple years ago and started publishing, of course, I was like, well, I have to read his work because he's been a big influence in me getting into into the bookish space. And all three of his books are very light, fun, positive, happy, like little like queer rom-coms. And they're just they're just a lot of fun. They all feel like summer beach reads. Like they all feel like a great little like a great little vacation for a weekend. They're all super short, like pretty quick reads. Like I read this in two days and I love that about them. They remind me a lot of like Becky Albertalli's uh, early stuff, well, even some of her later stuff, like Simon versus the Homo Sapien Agenda and things like that, that I just really enjoy. Phil Stamper, things like that. This one I can say is easily my favorite of Robbie's three books so far. I just, I just really enjoyed the characters. It has like a grumpy sunshine dynamic. Essentially the main character, uh, so his, th their whole drama department is going to New York and their teacher has given them a scavenger hunt to go around New York and do all these things and they get paired up with someone so he's supposed to be paired up with his best friend and but this girl right before they go she gets like detention or something like that and so she can't go so he gets paired up with the tech guy and of course they do not get along at all uh and he's like the main character is like very type a personality the tech guy is just like leave me alone and so they get paired up to go do the scavenger hunt. And then, of course, over the course of it, they start to realize they like each other. Uh, and it's so cute. And I think if you enjoy things like Broadway musicals, if you enjoy New York and the New York, like the grandeur of New York and the New York vibe, right? This is very much like a just fun jaunt through New York. It's a little bit heightened. There are moments where they get in, they get into things and they get into messes and situations that feel borderline unrealistic for high schoolers to get themselves mixed up in. Like, it almost has this, like, like, you watch some of these movies, like The Hangover, for example, you know, where it was like, they go on this trip, and then it's just like this heightened, almost chaos that ensues. There is, there are moments of that in this book, where I'm like, oh, could these two really find themselves in this situation? But I kind of didn't care, because it was so fun. Do you know what I mean? Like, you kind I was willing to suspend my disbelief, because it's, silly and fun and cute and romantic. And so I was just like, eh, who cares? <laughs> I also think the fact that this teacher let these like 18 year olds loose on the city and like ha just no supervision, just welcome to New York, go out there, do the scavenger hunt. I don't need to see you for two days. I thought that was like a little crazy. <laughs> like I just, I went on a, on a New York trip. I think when I was in like uh, junior high, sophomore or junior year. And I feel like we were, there were times where they were like, okay, you have some free time, feel free, to, feel free to explore, go see musical, whatever. But like, there were also like heavy portions of the trip that were planned that we had to go do things while we were there. And there's really none of that. And like, there's like one moment where they all have to go to a thing together. But for the most part, it's like, they got brought to New York basically to just like, go on a free for all. And I guess the scavenger hunt is supposed to help guide them to things, but like, there's no, like, there's no parent supervision. And there is, like, there are parents that are there to be, uh, to be like, um, what's the word? What's the word? I can't think of the word, but you know, like parent supervisors that come on a trip. Uh, there are parents there, but they're, they're literally not supervising. Like every time you see them, it's like, they're just like standing on the corner, like, oh, hey, what's up? How you doing? Okay, bye. <laughs> so there is a little bit of unrealisticness in this book. Okay. But again, it's so fun and it's just such a like wild ride through like all of your favorite, all your favorite New York spots. It's got like a lot of nods, like every single chapter, even the book's title is uh, titled after a Broadway musical song. Um, and so if you're into that, if you're into just like a wild, fun New York ride with two grumpy sun, like a grumpy sunshine dynamic of characters that are like falling in love throughout the book, 
it's just so fun and it's super cute. Like it's just so adorable. It's a really happy, positive, like feel good kind of book. Robbie Weber's writing reminds me a lot of like older Meg Ryan movies, but like for gay teens, like if they made Meg Ryan movies, You've Got Mail, if they made those movies about gay teens in present day, that would be the style of Robbie Weber's uh, books. And it's just, they're just fun. So I really liked this a lot. And it was like kind of a nice palate cleanser and refresher from some of the heavier stuff that I read this month that I'm about to show you. Uh, this was like a nice like come up for air and sunshine before delving back into darkness. So I, I, I read it at a perfect time. Like I kind of needed this kind of a book right when I read it. And that definitely heightened my enjoyment of it even more, which was great. So that is, what is this feeling? by Robbie Weber. Okay, so now we're gonna get a little darker, okay? So I'm kind of, I feel like I organize things in this video from lightest to darkest. I think what's wild is that I organize things at all because if you've been here before, you know that organization in these videos is not usually, we don't, we don't know her. So the next book I read, now I read this for, um, this is The Brightness Between Us. And now my, uh, The Darkness Outside Us, this is, <laughs> I feel like I just had five thoughts at once and I decided to try and share all of them with you at the same time. Okay. This book here is The Brightness Outside... Uh, the Brightness... <laughs> Hold on. We're, we're going to get it. Okay. Let's rally. Let's work together. This book in my hand is called The Brightness Between Us. This is the sequel to a book called The Darkness Outside Us, which is one of my favorite books ever written. Definitely one of my favorite sci-fi books. It is so good. It is, it's so twisty and so turny and it's a thriller, but it's also got like some like gay romance to it and it's queer, but it's also kind of scary and it's in space and it has twists that made me like gasp out loud. So when I heard that there was a sequel, I was very interested, but also concerned <laughs> because the darkness outside us, in my opinion, is perfect. And so the thought of adding to that scared me a little bit. Now, I got to read this early because I actually got um, brought on to do a sponsored post about it on TikTok and Instagram. Uh, so I've already posted those. You can go watch those. Those are sponsored content. Me holding this and talking to you about the book is not sponsored content. I'm just going to be talking to you about the book as I saw it. So just be aware of that. But this book was provided by the publisher. So I, I, I'll, I'll mention that at least. So I did really like this. I am curious to hear what the grander fandom of the first book thinks when they read this, because I think this book is going to be very much a love it or hate it for a lot of people. I think you'll love it if you loved, uh, and I'm going to be very careful because there's so much that I can say about this book that will not only could, uh, could potentially spoil this book, but would also potentially spoil the first book. And I really wouldn't want to do that because the first book is so flipping good that I wouldn't want to spoil a second of it for you. So I'm going to try to be intentionally vague. And if that bothers you, I'm sorry. <laughs> so what I will say is I think you will love this if what you loved about the first one were the sci-fi elements and the world building and the thriller slash horror level feeling of like just tension throughout the book. And if you liked the twists and the turns and the wait what of the, of the first book, I think you'll like this a lot. If you liked the first book for the fact that it was a gay love story in space, you might like this one not as much because the two main characters from the first book just aren't as big of a focus. And they are a focus. I don't want to say they're not there at all, but they aren't as big of a focus as I thought they might be. And I feel like their story does not particularly move forward that much because at the end of the day, this book is sort of interesting because it is in many ways, a sequel, but in some ways, a prequel, because there are some chapters that sort of fill in the blanks for us of what happened before the first book starts. And I really appreciated that information, but those pages given to that storyline mean that there are less pages given to the storyline of what happens after the first book. And the main character of what is happening after the first book is not the two characters from the first book. <laughs> so uh, I, I think that's all I can say. I feel like I've already spoiled too much or I've already said too much. I've already said too many things. So I think if you are just like, oh, I want more gays in space, you're gonna get a little bit of that here, but I don't know if you're gonna get as much of it as you are hoping you're gonna get. But if you're like, I want more of that like 
really twisty, mind-bendy space thriller story, then you're going to like this because this book kind of nicely hugs the first book and fills in a lot of the Im fills in a lot of space in both directions, both before and after. And I don't know if there's going to be a third book, <laughs> but the way this book ends to me heavily implies that there will be a third book. And I, I don't know if there's going to be, um, but I feel like there should be. Uh, this book ends in such a way that it feels like, it feels like the second book in a trilogy. From beginning to end, this book feels like book two of three in every way possible. So if, I, I would be shocked if after this came out, like a couple months later, if we didn't get a a book three announcement because it feels like there should be. Uh, it, th just the way this book ends feels to me like the story is not done yet in many ways. And I'm excited for that because I feel like the way it ends does set up a very captivating third book. And so I would love to see that third book and see how that all comes together. I will say there are moments of in this book of, of, I don't know if I said this already, but I really liked this a lot. And it, I feel like I finished it and my initial thought was, what? <laughs> and for like three days after finishing it, I, I couldn't figure out if I liked it or not. I was like, did I like that? I feel similarly about, I've talked about this before, but The Starless Sea is one of my all-time favorite books. But when I finished that book, I was like, I don't think I liked that. And then every day after that, for like two months, I kept thinking about it to the point where I finally like was like, you know what? Actually, I think I loved that because it just made me think so much. And I think that is how I feel about this book. Like every day that goes by since I've finished it, I think about it and I think I like it more and more every single day. And I think that's really cool. I think there are there are moments in this book that are horrifying and terrifying. There are moments in this book that are so genuine and sweet and beautiful. There are moments in this book, just like in the first, that had twists that made me just like, what? <laughs> that are so good and just make you like, Huh? <laughs> so I think if you like all of that from the first book, you're going to like this book. But if you're looking for a continuation of Gaze in Space, this might not be the book you're hoping it's going to be. So I just, I would put that caveat into the world. But I came out of this book feeling so many feelings and eventually landed on that I really liked it a lot. But it is a book that is going to take you on a journey. And I will say this, when I imagined the sequel of this, of the first book, this is in no way what I imagined. And I think the fact that it's so different than what I imagined is what made it take time for me to get to a point of saying, yeah, you know what? I, I liked that <laughs> because it was just so much of a different direction than I expected the story to take. And I really applaud, I really applaud Elliot Schrafer for taking that direction and making such a bold choice and making and taking such a risk because this book is a huge risk as, as a second book from the first. Just, th just the fact of writing a second book from the first is a huge risk and taking the story in this direction is even, even bigger. And I think it's really bold to do. And I really appreciate that it was done because I think it ends up being a product that is better than anything I could have imagined, which is pretty awesome. So that is The Brightness Between Us, the sequel to The Darkness Outside Us. This will be out in October. Now, okay, so a couple of months ago, I was asked to moderate a chat with Adeline Grace, who is the author of Belladonna. Now, I have owned Belladonna for a while. I hadn't read it yet, but I was like, I've heard these books are great. I've met Adeline Grace before in person. She was lovely. Yeah, I would love to moderate that talk. So that is coming up on October 2nd uh, at a Barnes & Noble here in Orlando. And so I'm going to be moderating a discussion with her. So of course, I had to read all three books because I wanted to have an idea of what we were talking about and ask good questions. So this month I read Belladonna and I read Fox Glove and I read the newest book, which is the one we're technically like having the talk and she's doing the signing for, which is Wisteria. And let me tell you, I loved these. <laughs> um, what a great trilogy. I wish I'd read them sooner, but also I kind of love that I waited because then I just got to read all three in a row, which was really lovely. Book one, we're following Cigna. She has basically, something has happened to her. I'm, again, I'm going to try not to give too much away here, but she is kind of unable to die. And she has this ability where she can like eat belladonna berries and ends up having some of the same powers as death 
who she then ends up meeting. And she really hates death because she feels like death consistently is taking people from her, from her life. Uh, the first part of this book really has almost like aged up, like YA series of unfortunate events vibes. And so she, her caretaker dies. So she gets a chance to go uh, with these, uh, with this other family where she's going to stay with them. And so she gets taken to their, to their chateau, to their mansion, whatever you want to call it. And while she's there, she finds out that their, uh, the mother of the family has passed away recently. And uh, the, the daughter of the family is very, very ill. And she finds out, oh, th well, but that probably has to do with poison. So she is now trying to solve this mystery of like, who is doing this? Who is who has done this to the mother of the family? Who is doing this to the daughter? So the main character's name is Sigma, the daughter's name is Blythe. And she's trying to then, despite her hatred for him, work with death to try and find out some answers. But, uh, but you know what? The thing is, she hates death, but also death is so hot. <laughs> like the way that death is described in this book, uh, I mean, he's just like... Like, how could you resist? He's so hot. Like, I've never... I know we read books uh, with morally gray, like, dark, broody characters, and we love them, but oftentimes we're just like, eh, whatever. But, like, death in this book? I was like, hello? Sir? <laughs> he's he's just described so hot, t hotily. Hot, is that a word? He just... He sounds like a hottie and a half. Let me tell you that. Um, I'm just slowly every day turning into my mother a little bit. And hottie and a half, I feel like, is right in that, <laughs> in that lane. What were we talking about? Oh, right. So, you know, there's this definitely this, like, enemies to lovers situation. But then at the end of this book, we find out that maybe there are some other magical entities in this world. I'm not going to spoil it, but that we find that out. So then in, in Foxglove, we start to explore that a little more. Because one of these magical entities thinks that... Uh, that Cigna and he are, 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 should be together. And Cigna's like, no, I, I can't be with you because look at how hot death is, right? And I'm obviously like really paring down the story because I don't want to spoil anything for you. And then in Wisteria, we follow a different character and kind of see her story as things continue because this story, this book kind of ends Cigna's story a little bit. And then we follow a different character in the same world. And, and just, you know, we still have a lot of the same characters from the previous two books, but we have a different character who takes the spotlight in this one. All three are so good. They are like gothic romance, but also paranormal with magic and and just like dark vibes. I don't read a lot of gothic stories, like gothic fantasy. And so uh, maybe it, it probably helps because to me, this was like very fresh and new because I don't read a lot of books kind of in that gothic fantasy genre. I do now and then, but I've, I feel like oftentimes I read them and I just, the vibes don't, I don't quite get the like kind of creepy, almost like Tim Burton-esque vibes. And in this, I definitely felt it. Like this has that like Adam's family, like spooky house, things are afoot. Cigna can see the dead. So there's like ghosts walking around. And then of course, I really loved the aspect that we have these magical, powerful entities, these world shaping entities that are like taking human form basically to kind of interact with these characters. And I think it gives it this heightened sense of like, there's this much bigger world beyond these young women and their, you know, s them trying to solve these mysteries in their lives with their family. So it has this like very personal family story, but then it has this much bigger story about these like powerful beings that are kind of interacting with all of this. And I think the dual layer of that just really worked for me. And this is the first time I've really, I've, re I've read Adeline Grace and I just really liked her writing a lot. I just think she really nails that like spooky, kind of creepy, gothic, you know, feel. I think her writing just is really beautiful and really matches this story and this world so, so well. And it's any, it's interesting because just today, I feel like in this past month, I've become an Adeline Grace fan. And then just today, she announced that she's gonna be publishing her first ever adult book next year. And now I'm super excited for that. I feel like I got caught up on Adeline Grace just in time to be excited for her entering the adult fantasy realm, adult romance, adult fantasy. I don't know, adult romanticy. I don't really know what it's going to be. I'm assuming it's going to be romanticy because that's essentially what these are, but young adult. I would just assume that's what her adult book is going to be, but I could be wrong about that. But I really, really enjoyed these a lot. I think 
this is a series where you can easily read the first book, and if you're like, I mean, it does it has, does end on a cliffhanger, just so you know. It has a complete three acts, it has a complete story, it has a very satisfying, like, ending, uh, but it will leave you wanting more, for sure. Because, <laughs> like, the second I finished it, I was like, whoop, let's grab the second book, I gotta read it right now and find out what happens next. But this is definitely a series where, like, you don't have to read to book three to, like, find enjoyment in them. You can read the first book, and if you love it, you're gonna love all three of them. If you don't love it, they're probably not going to be for you because they are all, they are, they all kind of follow a similar vibe and a similar feeling and a similar structure. So you can read Belladonna. And if you love Belladonna, you will love the other two. You'll probably love the other two more. I think Wisteria was probably my favorite of the three. If Belladonna doesn't work for you, you're, you're probably fine to skip the other two because you're, there's nothing significantly that changes in them. You know, some people are like, you have to read the first two books before it gets good. And that drives me crazy. This is like all three are very on par with each other. They just maybe have like, they get, a, they get steadily a little bit better, but that's just because the world and the story just gets more and more interesting the deeper you get into it. But I just, I loved these. <laughs> they were so good. They were so fun. I, I got to the end of Wisteria and was like, I want more. <laughs> and I think there might be another book coming out that's maybe like a novella. Um, but I definitely got to the end of this trilogy and wanted more from this world. So even at this point, after reading all three books in a row, I'm still not tired of this world, which I think is a really, really good sign. So that was Belladonna, Fox Love, and Wisteria by Adeline Grace. Highly recommend. Last but not least, this is probably the book we'll talk the most about, I would assume, but I have already talked a lot about it in short content. So maybe we, I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. Because I also don't really want this to be a spoilery review. Maybe I'll do a separate video that's like really deep dive spoilering of this, but I have started um, rereading the Stormlight Archives. Uh, I'm doing it with Book Reviews Kill, the podcast. Uh, so we're doing weekly chats where we talk about the parts as we read them. I have a playlist on my YouTube page of the ones that have been published so far. So if you want to get caught up on that and listen to our discussion, it's Evan from Book Reviews Kill. We've got Zoran on there, Laura from Laura's Library, and Erin is joining us as well. But I think she may have just joined us for the last one or the first one. I know she just joined us for the end of the book. I don't know if she was there for the previous episodes. I'm having a hard time remembering. But anyway, it's a great group of people. We've had a lot of fun discussing these. So over the past month, we read, we're obviously reading these in preparation of the fifth book, which is coming out in December. I don't think we're going to get caught up quite in time for the fifth book. So we're probably going to start reading the fifth book a little bit later in December, or early January. But this has been such a fun ride. I did a full annotation. So you can see I did tabs for this. I did a bunch of like highlighting of the book. So I split up different characters. So I had different characters, had different like colors and different highlight things. Oh, this is gonna be really hard to see because I'm using, because of the thing I'm using on my camera here. I have read the first two books before, but it's been long enough that I didn't remember anything that happened in them. With the exception of like one scene that happens at the halfway point of this book, that was the only thing I remembered from this book. I didn't remember the ending. I didn't remember the beginning. So for me, this very much felt like a first time read. And now going into next month, we're going to be reading book two, which I thought I brought in here to show you, but Words of Radiance, and I don't remember anything that happened in that book. So consider these kind of like a first, like an almost first read, because they feel like a first read to me in the best of way. I think I, I mentioned this on a video I did, but I kind of love that I have a bad memory because it means that I can, you know, people are always like, books I wish, books I would give my left arm to read again for the first time. And I'm like, I don't have to give away anything. I just have to wait a couple years and then I can reread it as if it were the first time because I will have forgotten it. And this time, I don't know if I'll forget this time of reading it so easily because doing a full annotation, I feel like really helps with reten my retention. For me, that really helps a lot. And I think also at the end of every week, discussing the chapters with friends has really also helped. There are things that I maybe wouldn't have even noticed if we hadn't talked about them. And it's it's really just created this really beautiful, memorable experience for me. If you're not familiar, this is a huge epic fantasy series from Brandon Sanderson. The Way of Kings is the first one in the series. It takes place on this world that is just riddled with problems. They essentially, the story starts with the king being assassinated. And then we cut forward and we see that now the the people that the king was over are at war with the the this other people called the Parshendi who were responsible for the assassination and they're fighting on what's called the shattered plains which are these desolate plains that have these giant like cracks and fissures in them that you can easily fall into so they have to like run bridges 
over to the chasms so they can get across to even get to each other to fight each other. So we follow different characters in this world. We follow Dalinar, who is a character who is one of the high princes that is taking part in this war. And he is having visions of like long ago times and the things that kind of formed and shaped this world. Sort of the angels and demons and gods of this world that kind of shaped it in times past. He's like having visions of that. And they're kind of trying to instruct him that something bad is a coming. And then we follow Kaladin. This is sort of Kaladin sort of the main character of this book. And he was a warrior who ends up kind of falling uh, from grace a little bit because of something that happens to him in his past. And he ends up a slave. So he ends up by getting sold to being one of the bridge runners uh, that has to like run the bridges out and then place them so that the high princes and so the soldiers can cross. And being a bridge runner is terrible. Like you, your, your life expectancy, expectancy is like three days. It's horrible. And so he is living through that. And then we also follow a character named Shalon, who has been basically sent to take on kind of like an educational mentorship, internship from this woman named Yasna, who is like very smart and very, she's doing all this research, but she is secretly there to try and steal this thing that Yasna uses called a soul caster that lets her basically like change things into other things. So she could like touch a rock and turn it into water, for example. And so Shalon is there to try and steal this thing so she can take it back to help her family who has like fallen on hard times. And so we follow, the, and then there's also other characters. There's other characters kind of sprinkled throughout. And it's just, there's so much, if you've never read any Brandon Sanderson, but specifically if you haven't read this book, there's just so much world building. This world is so huge and vast and there's so much information. And there are these like interludes where we like go into these different characters throughout the world. Just, it's almost like Brandon Sanderson's way of like reminding us that the world is just so big and we are just getting a glimpse, just a hint of what is out there. I think what's really special about these books and, and just, you know, after reading this first one, this is a thousand page books. It's almost like, like it's almost exactly a thousand pages and it just feels so readable. I feel like a lot of times when you see big tomes like this, they are, they are a little intimidating and this is a long book. I don't want to sugarcoat it. It's a long book. I, I think, I think the audiobook is like 35 or 36 hours or something like that. Like it's a long book, but it's so readable. And it's so consumable and it's so hard to put down. It's just like very, it's like very easy, fun reading, even though it's a very, very long book. And I feel like it's very well paced as well. Like there are moments where characters aren't doing a whole lot, but it always feels like you're getting just enough information. You're getting just enough action. You're getting just enough. The story is like progressing at just like a perfect pace to keep you going. It like really has that just one more chapter feel. Sanderson's really good at like ending chapters with a hook. Like every chapter, like maybe nothing happens in the chapter, but the end of the chapter will be like this really great hook that makes you want to know more and then you read on to the next chapter but the next chapter about a different character and that will end with a hook so you're constantly like keeping reading to try and get back to those hooks to find out what's going on but then he just keeps like re-hooking you every chapter which i just think is really really fun and i i think his world just feels so vibrant and alive and you get through this story and you really do feel like you've seen a complete story arc like it is a very rewarding like story like you get to the end and there is like a very epic climax of this book but it also just leaves you with so many more questions like you're like i need i need to know more i need to know more i have now several times likened this series to one piece and so if you're not familiar with one piece one piece is this anime and manga that is very very long it's still not done and it's over a thousand episodes long as an anime and it's over a hundred volumes long as a manga and I say, it reminds me a lot of, of One Piece because the world is so rich and deep and vast. And it's one of those things that even though it's so long, I got about 500 pages into this book. And I remember thinking, there are another 4,000 page books ahead of me in this. Because the, the whole series, I think, is supposed to be 10 books. But, the, but book five is going to mark kind of a major turning point for this series. It's going to end, it's going to be the end of like, part one or era one. And I'm not really sure what that means yet, but it's going to mark like a big, like kind of end moment and start. And then when book six comes out, that'll be kind of the start of the next whatever is going on in this story, in this world. And I thought, so I just think about those five books, right? Like that's like 5,000 pages worth of book, which is a lot of story. And I, I remember thinking 500 pages into this book, like, wow, those, those five books are not going to be enough. <laughs> I'm going to get to the end of those five books and I'm still going to want more and I'm still going to have questions and I'm still, it's not going to be enough. And I feel that way about One Piece. And I feel like a lot of people talk about that with One Piece, right? Like they, they'll, people will get caught up on One Piece. It's something I'm slowly working on and you'll get through those thousand episodes and people will be like, I watched all of it. 
and I still want more. I mean, there's still more coming, but it just, I think it takes a really special series to not only be really long, but to be really long and then continuously captivating and then be so, you know, so long that even when you get to the end of it, you still aren't ready to leave that world. And I feel like that's how this series is going to be for me because I, I just, I feel so wrapped up on it. I, I feel like I had to push myself to read other books this month because, you know, well, obviously we were reading like 300 pages a week to try and stay on schedule to, <laughs> to get these episodes out and to like talk about the book as we were talking about it on this podcast. But also at the same time, like I just was so in this world that stepping away to like read other things that I needed to read for like work or, you know, like I, I needed to read the Belladonna trilogy so that I was ready for this talk that I'm doing with Adeline Grace. And I loved those books, but it still took like discipline and training to get me to be like, okay, Jason, you have to stop reading The Way of Kings because you have other things you need to do this month. So you need to like schedule and you need to like take breaks from this book because you just don't want to leave. You don't want to leave the world. You don't want to let go. It's just so captivating. <laughs> um, I, I don't know how else to explain it. It's a world that is just so rich and alive and these characters feel like real people despite the very magical, very different than our world that they are living in. You just don't want to leave. And I think that is the mark of a truly, really great fantasy work is if you just never want to leave that world, I think that is really special. You know, I, I can count on one hand the amount of like fantasy books where it was it was hard for me to say goodbye. It was hard for me at the end of the series to put it down and be like, okay, it's time to move on. Usually I get to the end of a series and I'm like, okay, it's time to move on. <laughs> But there are times where it's just like, it, the story is so good and the characters are so compelling that you get to the end and you're like, I, I don't know that I'm ready to go. <laughs> I feel like I might need more. And I feel like that's where I'm going to be at with this. Like, we just finished book one. We're starting book two. I'm going to start reading it tonight. And I'm so, so, so excited to continue the story because we kind of took a little bit of time off between finishing book one and starting book two because we wanted everybody that was doing the podcast to be able to get fully caught up before we started book two. So for me, it's been about a week since I finished this and now I'm gonna start book two. And even that week was too long. I'm like, I'm like hungering for it. I'm like thirsty to start the next book. And that's really exciting feeling. And I think it's the mark of a really special fantasy book. So that's The Way of Kings. If you haven't checked it out, I would recommend it. I also highly recommend, a lot of people always ask like, where do I start with Brandon Sanderson? I typically recommend Mistborn. Mistborn is a trilogy of books. And it's the first the first thing of Brandon Sanderson's that I ever read. And I really love it. It's still very near and dear to my heart. It's a, just a really incredible trilogy. Uh, and I think it will give you a good taste of Brandon Sanderson. You get a complete story in three books and each of those books, the first Mistborn is pretty self-contained. So I would say you can read the first Mistborn as a standalone book. And if you love it, you can read the rest of the trilogy and then you can kind of dive into Sanderson. But also if you don't love it, I think that you can stop there. Like Mistborn to me is like a really, really good snapshot of Sanderson. And I think if you love that book, it's a good Sign that you'll love his other work. And if you don't love that book, it's a good sign that you probably won't love his other work. And I'm sure there are exceptions to that, but that seems to be what I've noticed about when I recommend Mistborn to people or when Mistborn, when people read Mistborn first, it kind of is a good snapshot into whether Brandon Sanderson's fantasy writing is for you or not. So that's the one I usually recommend. But if you're looking for something chonky to just like dive into and become obsessed with, The Way of Kings, The Stormlight Archives is, is that for sure. <laughs> Honorable mention, uh, this month's Easy Cat Book Club pick is was The Will of the Mini. Uh, I have not finished this yet. This is probably the first time I've ever not finished a book that we are doing for book club. I will finish it. So I'm about a third of the way through the book. But when I chose the book, I didn't realize it was so long. And reading it alongside The Way of Kings has been really challenging. But I will finish it probably in the next week. So this will I'll be talking about this in next month's video because I'm just not going to finish it by the end of the month. I really tried and it's just not going to happen and that's okay. Uh, but I will finish it by the end of October so we can talk about it then. But I'm about a third of the way in. I'm really loving it so far, but I want to finish it before I have my like complete thoughts about it. So that's just like a little honorable mention. The other thing I want to talk about is that in October, the things that I'm going to be focusing for the first little bit on are obviously the, the second book of the Stormlight Archives, but I'm also going to be reading and talking about the three other books. So for the bindery launches, for the initial launches of, of the bindery imprint books, my imprint's book, House of Frank by Kay Sinclair, is coming out on October 15th, but there are also three other books coming out on October 15th as well. So those books are, these are the special editions of them, which are still available for pre-order. So we have 
And the Sky Bled by S. Hati. That is the special edition. We have Inferno's Air by Tiffany Wang. Um, that is there. And then we have Strange Beasts by Susan J. Morris. Uh, that one there. I'm going to be reading all three of these because I want to have them read before we go to New York for the launch because the launch will be for all four books. So I'm going to be reading these and talking about them on my channels in short form. But then I will do longer reviews of them in my wrap up for October. And then once these are done, so this is going to be kind of my first two weeks of October. My second two weeks of October, I'm going to really focus on like shorter, fun, spooky reads. So that is kind of what you can expect from my October reading wrap up when we get there uh, at the end of October. Uh, and I just wanted, wanted to give you like a little sneak peek of what is coming next. So bindery books first, and then we will follow, follow that up with uh, some fun, shorter spooky reads that I've picked up. I've picked up a few that are like 200 pages long each, and I'm just gonna like rapid fire through them uh, just to get some like spooky vibes for, for the season, right? That is everything that I read in September. I don't, it's, it's not like a ton of books, but they are like, a lot of them are chonkier and I read it, I read through a whole series with Belladonna. And so just a really fun month. I, there's not a single thing that I read this past month that I wouldn't recommend. I, I liked everything that I read this month, which is rare and pretty fun and pretty exciting. And I think I kind of needed that because August was such a bad reading month for me. I'm really excited that I had a month of just like, every book was a banger. Like every single book was so good. And I was so excited. It kind of like, re-excited me about reading after a month of not really reading a lot. And that that's kind of exactly what I needed. Um, so all of that being said, I'll leave my links down below. If you want to check out my Fable Book Club, if you want to check out my Anime Book Club, if you want to check out Easy Cat Press, all of that information will be down for you, down below for you to check out. And so I hope that you do. I will have a vlog up when I go to New York. I'm going to be going for the launch of House of Frank as well as for New York Comic Con. Those will probably be two separate vlogs, I would imagine. Those will be up the week after I get back because I'm not going to be able to edit them there. I'm just going to be doing a whole bunch of filming. So I'm excited to share all of that with you this month. And then I should also have a new Let's Play board game video up for you by the end of the month as well. So lots of really fun content coming this month, which is to say, if you enjoyed this and you'd like to see all of that and I'd love to see you back here make sure to like and subscribe that way we can hang out again because I feel like we had a good time I feel like this was a good time between you and I and I'd like to do it again please yeah okay so thank you so much for watching I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day a wonderful October stay safe during Halloween and as always happy reading